All right. So uh, la, 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 we are in Bab 6. All right. So in the previous classes, I already talked about all the stuff that is related to Imbangan Duga. So we have done the exercises up to question question three, right? Four we haven't done yet. Yeah, question three. So I still remember this is the question that we did in last class, isn't it? This uh question three. So what we did for question three was we changed this thing, okay, into uh buku tunai dan ledger. And then daripada ledger, kita bawa to imbangan duga. So this is what we did uh, for this imbangan duga question. All right. So as you can see that the imbangan duga is actually bukan susah. All right. It's not hard at all. So for you to do well in your imbangan duga, you just need to remember the abalim. Right, so I always say this. This is the A for asset, the B for belanja, the A for ambilan, the L for liability, the H for hasil, and the M for model. You see, you see lah. All right. So when you know how, I mean, when you remember all this abalim thing, then definitely your imbangan dugo shouldn't be a problem. Okay, uh, it will be very easy. Okay, so this is uh, all about the imbangan dugo. And then in the imbangan dugo question, okay, so what we have saw is uh, the first type of question for imbangan dugo is the loose uh, straight away type of question. Imagine me. Okay, very straightforward, isn't it? So, they give you all the maklumat, the informasi, and then from here, you straight away do the imbangan duga. All right, so this is like straightforward uh, question. Very easy. So another type for imbangan duga is what we did in last class where you need to go from ayat. Okay, ayat means the, the maklumat, the data maklumat. to ledger to imbangan duga all right this is what we did last class all right so you can see these are all the ayat these are all the maklumat and then from here you have to do ledger and then after ledger you do the imbangan Duga. Okay, and then there's another type of question where they don't give you ayat, they give you document. All right, so this document they can from document ask you to do buku catatan pertama. From buku cahaya pertama, they want you to do ledger. And then from ledger, only do your imbangan duga. Ah. So let's see if we have time for this or not. I think uh, maybe in next class, I'll find a question like this one so that we can do. All right, because we hardly touch from document into buku cahaya pertama, like maybe once or twice. But we need to do more because this, this type of question, if they come out in the exam, then uh, a lot of students akan, uh, you know, tak tahu bagaimana buat lah, right? So, it's better for us to prepare for it. So, sometimes they don't go from document to bukchan pertama. They can straight away from document, jump to ledger, also can. Then from ledger to imbangan duga. Same thing for this ayat. The ayat, they can ask like from ayat, they ask you to do buku catatan pertama dulu. 
And then from buku catatan pertama to ledger, then to imbangan juga. So you can see that this type of question is very flexible. If they really want to test you, if I am the examiner, if I really want to test you, I can come out all the way to this one. So this one is very long question, and but if you understand the concept, it will be very simple. All right. So these are all the potential way of testing for this imbangan juga. All right, are you guys following? If yes, you type a F in the chat box. Very good. All right. Okay, so now, so that, that's all for Ipangan Duga. So as I said, for this number three, maybe uh, we will do it in the next class, all right? So that uh, you know how to do when it comes out in the exam. Okay, now, <coughs> in this uh, Ipangan Duga Bab 6, there's another subtopic, which is called the system inventory, right? So for this system inventory, you can see it's a system for inventory. So in the inventory, you know like what is inventory, right? Or uh, the old term stock. Lah. So much of your barang again. So you have to know that in Satu business, there are a lot, a lot of things to set up. Okay, you don't think like, oh, it's very easy to set up a business. You just go there and then you say, I want to sell a shoes and you just boleh, okay, you just boleh, boleh jual kasut. No, all right. Of course, uh, you must, let's say if you dream or your, your target to is to book a new business uh, for yourself, of course, I mean, you should dream big, right? Okay, you should be your own businessman. You should go and uh, book up business. But what I'm telling, telling you is that after you book up business too, you find out that there are actually a lot, a lot of things that uh, need to be set up dalam business too. Okay, so one of it is system inventory. Okay, let me give you some chontol, all right, in a business. What are the systems? that uh, you can find in a business. Just like, okay, before I go into business, let's talk about our body. Okay. Okay, so this is your body, right? So this is a human body. So if you all study science, you know that in our body, there are many systems. And each system, they have different function. Correct or not? So actually, I already forgotten all the, 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 the terms in the science. Ah. Okay, what I can remember is one of it is your respiratory system. Yeah, system. Then you got digestive system. You got the uh, neuro, neuro something, something system. Right. What other system again? So you got the respiratory, di uh, digestive, digestive. Um, you got the blood part. Okay. The blood something where system. Okay. So, you got all this thing system in one body so that the whole thing can run, can function, you can move, you can talk uh, as you like. Isn't it? So, but in each system, there actually is a big thing. Isn't it? So, if you study science, the system, the next thing is what? Uh, let me think. System, something, uh, tissue, organ. Right, you got an organ, then the organ is made out of tissue, and then the tissue is made out of cells. Uh, correct or not? Uh, if you give me a B in the chat box, I hope I still remember all these things. 
I think a bit correct, ah, right? Okay, don't not hundred percent at least seventy percent, right? Right. So you that's why I don't like to study science because in science you need to have far banyak banyak bentuk, all right? So of course, I'm not saying science is bad, okay? Because uh, science is actually a very interesting subject because out of the three subjects in science, dalam science ada physics, you ada biology, you ada chemistry. So I like physics actually, right? But this part is under biology lah, all right? So you got all these, you know, cells, tissues, organs to set up system, then only the respiratory, the respiratory system yelah yang to you, you breathe in, breathe out. You can function good, okay? Is your respiratory system. The digestive is that when you makan, all right, the food go into your, your throat and then there's something called bogus or whatever and then you need to digest and then bring it into your blah, blah, blah to stomach and then your stomach will release some, uh, what? Um, some, some acid and then to digest all the things and then you go into different, different part, okay? So that is your digestive system, isn't it? So same thing for all this system to all this system is to maintain your body, okay, so that it can function properly every day. So same thing, this, there are systems in your business. And there are many systems. Chonto, I can give you some example. Okay, Chonto, let me let me think. Ah, uh. billing and payment system. Why do you need a billing and payment system? Okay, Chonto, now we are in a kasut uh, business. Ah, uh. so in a shoe business, we need a billing and payment system. Why we need a billing and payment system? Because when we buy shoes, how, how do we build the uh, how do we build to the person? Or how they build us? And then how do we make the payment? You know what I mean? So maybe the payment has to be through credit card. Atta buy a cash. Atta you guna FPX online transfer. So you got different um, types. You got different ways to make payment. So, is it automatically? Is it not? So, is it like, apabila kasut itu sampai, and then, uh, the online payment straight away, dia akan automatically bayar kepada your pembekal, your supplier, or how? So, you need to set up a system for this thing. And then, for billing, it's like what? So, when you sell a shoes, you see, you when you go to one Utama, you go to the shopping mall, you go into the store, you go to Nike. When you pay, how how does it work? You, you think that the thing just appear out of nowhere. Of course, you need to set up the machine and then the invoice, the receipt, how they do it. And then the, the receipt will go into what system and so on. So this is what we call a billing and payment system. We got other system. Like what? Uh, maybe uh, salary payroll system. So you run your business, you are the banyak stuff. Let's say in, in your macam Nike. Nike is a so big, big, big company all over the world. So we must have a very good salary and payroll system. If you use a normal a traditional way. What is the traditional way of via the salary and payroll? Think ah, if a small business, of course, maybe about five lima orang dalam business itu, then the boss boleh bagi bank and then uh masuk wang into the machine to five percent. I tell you, you can do online transfer lah, right? Online transfer to five orang lima orang saja, right? So you just tekan type in the, the, the account number and then type in the proper amount, then you, you tekan send. So that is for five lima orang. But imagine for Nike, you got, let's say, uh, I don't go like 50 or 100,000. Just 
1,000 orang saja. Imagine, you hanya ada 1,000 orang. Eh, how are you gonna go online and use your phone and type 1,000 punya orang punya uh, account? You need, you go and do one by one. Uh. Why? By the time you finish, what, next year already. Uh. Isn't it? So, there must be a system. There's a way, like automatically every month, dia akan hantar the one into all these 1,000 people at the same time. If, for 1,000 people, if your business got 100,000 people, how are you going to do that? So there is a salary and payroll system for it. And then for your information, if you ask your parents, okay, for those that like work employee, you need to pay what? You need to pay EPF la, SOXO la, how, how do you spell SOXO? SOXO la, blah, blah, blah. La. Then you need to pay uh, tax and so on. You need to deduct from the, the uh, employee. So all these things, the, the the boss have to help the staff to do it. So they must have a system for all these things or else it will be very, very messy. All right? So this is one of it. So another one, this, the inventory system, which we will we, we be learning later. All right? So this inventory system is like, what system? How do you need to record all this inventory? When the inventory comes in, how are you going to record for it? If you got 100,000 stock, what method are you going to use to count all the 100,000 units of shoes? You got to admit, there must be a way. Takkan, all the shoe comes in, like lorry comes in, lorry comes in, then you need to go and count one by one. One, two, three, four. Well, if you got 100,000, then you count until you die, isn't it? So they must have a system to control this part. And then they must have a system, accounting system. There's another one, accounting system. What is your accounting system? How do you record all these things? You see? So you can see that I'm just giving you some examples in this, um, in this business. So for a big company to function very well, they have many many departments that's why if you go to a, a big company they got a lot of departments they got finance department and then they got purchase department they got uh well department again like a uh, talent hire or we call hr hr means human resource so they got a department just to hire people Okay, so they just here to interview uh, some new interns, interview new uh, pekerja, pekerja yang berminat untuk pekerja dalam company ni. So this, they are here to hire people. And then, what are the departments again? They are like, um, let me think, uh, operation. Blah, 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 blah. You see? So each department then they got another system for it. So, this is like one of the small picture that I give to you lah about like the uh, how a, a company functions, how a company runs. All right, do you guys understand? If yes, give me a U in the chat box. Understand, yeah? Clear? Alright. So, uh, let's get back to the system inventory. Okay. So, now, we're just in a small part, which is the system inventory. And this in this system inventory, we are going like, um, not very high level is just an, uh, a low level okay level for SPM uh, students all right so here they break down to system inventory Bakara and system inventory Baturusa. okay so you can see that let me just explain on this system inventory Bakala dulu so for this system inventory Bakala is you can see that uh dia dijalankan secara manual right and then 
Yeah, it do. What is manual means? Means one by one using human effort. Human intervention. Yeah, it do. You hit on inventory satu per uh, per satu. You go and count one by one. Biasanya digunakan oleh perniagaan berskala kecil dan sedang. So normally, uh, the small company or a small business that use this type of um system inventory berkala. Alright. So, contoh like all those kedai runcit, kedai runcit that you see ah uh, by the roadside or near near your house. Okay, so you got the uh, kedai runcit there, and then you see the pachek makcek. Okay, they are selling uh some apa ada ada apa yang mereka jual yang all those rice lah. Okay, na um and so on. All right, so all these kedai runcit yang yang kecil ni atau restoran ah uh, atau yang you bagi hawker itu restoran food court all these ah uh, angka anti. Okay. Yang jauh nasi goreng lah, bla 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 lah. Okay, so all this yang berskala kecil punya mereka boleh guna sistem inventory berkala. Okay, so how many ah uh, ayam yang mereka beli? Okay, then they can count. Ah, uh, ada lima hari ini saya beli sepuluh ah uh, what do you use for the the biji ya? Eh, bukan lah. For ayam we use ekor ah, sepuluh ekor ayam. Okay, then sayur berapa? Okay, berapa kg? Then blah blah blah. Okay, then they write down. They use what? They use this system inventory berkala. So when you use a system inventory berkala, because you manual, then you can use this card inventory. You see, ah, alright. Whereas for this system inventory berterusan, ini is normally for digunakan oleh pasar raya besar macam Tesco, Aeon, Lotus, bla bla bla. All these like besar you, you go Tesco and nampak wah besar banyak banyak barang, a lot of stock inventory. You think that you go there and count one by one. Ah. They have some system. They have a way to calculate all the stock, all the inventory there. All right? So that's why for this uh system inventory berterusan, you still uh we we enter into account but uh berdagangan. So you can see that there are the macam uh quant uh, cost so you need la jumlah cost belian la cost jalan la. So all these things will be in your account berdagangan. But whereas normally for those people they use system inventory berkala. They don't use account perdagangan. They use jadual persamaan perkenalan, which we learn from Bab Two in Form Four. <coughs> right? That's why in Bab Two, jadual persamaan perkenalan, when you beli barang niaga, kita tambah mana? Kita tambah dalam inventory. But you know that since Bab Two, selepas Bab Dua. Kita tak pernah guna inventory lagi. When kita beli, where do we debit? Kita debit account belian. When kita jual, kita credit account jualan. Because what we are learning for belian and jualan is actually later we will go into the account perdagangan. Because in your form four, form five, SPM, we learn. Of course, we need to learn for account perdagangan and all this lah for uh for big company lah. Alright, takkan you just come here and learn some easy stuff. That's why bab tu sangat senang because bab tu jadual persamaan perkenalan is very easy because these are normally used by all these ah uh, small enterprise kedai runcit yang yang tata orang yang tata accounting punya they can use jadual persamaan perkenalan because it's very easy to use, very simple. And imagine if you only know how to use jadual persamaan perkenalan. And then you go to a big company and say, "Eh, I I know how to use jadual persamaan perkenalan. I know how to buat ah uh, cut inventory sahaja. Ah, uh, do you think they will hire you or not? Of course, they will hire someone 
dan know how to do all the account perdagangan, account untung rugi, penyata kedudukan kewangan. You know how to post uh, from document into buku catatan pertama, into ledger, into imbangan duga. Ah, then the company akan hire you. You get know I me? Mean? Because they need someone like you. You know all these things. Because for this persamaan perkenalan is for small business only relevant. And when you go to the kedai runcit and you tell the pacik, eh hey, pacik, you are the you you nak saya tak? Ah, <laughs> saya accountant. Saya know how to buat jadual persamaan perkenalan dan card inventory. Do you think the pacik have the have the the money to hire you or not? Memang dah ada lah, right? So, as an accountant rate, okay, let's say accountant, uh, you go to a company, you get 4,000 ringgit satu bulan. Contoh ah, do you think that you go to the same kedai runcit, they will pay you 4,000 ringgit or not to come and do the jadah persamaan perkenaan and card inventory? Of course not lah, because the Patrick himself doesn't know how to buat jadah persamaan perkenaan. And of course, they, they won't pay 4,000 ringgit to hire you to go and do their thing. Because 4,000 ringgit is like a lot to them already. Lah, like for this Kedai Runcit. Because Kedai Runcit, how much do you think they can earn in one month? Okay, let's say they can earn 10,000. Satu bulan is like a lot already for Kedai Runcit. If 10,000 a month and they have to pay you 4,000 and you only come in here and do Jadah Persamaan Pekanan, they only left with 6,000 only. All right, so why not they just save up 4,000, they still got 10,000. All right, so now, come back to here. So we really learned Jadah Persamaan Perkenaan. So now we're going to learn the cut inventory. So we are just learning this because it is in the syllabus. All right, but for my past experience, I've never seen it coming out in your SVM. Okay, but that doesn't mean that it won't come out. Maybe God. Okay, but it's very, very less peratusan. Maybe 10% chances coming up. All right, that's why we still have to learn through it. And you need to look at the, you need to understand why we got the cut, cut inventory, why are we using it, and then how do we use it. All right, because uh, if you go to Form 5, if you are doing a, your project, because in Form 5, Everyone will have to do a project and the, the mark akan dikira dalam your SPM, like a small percentage. Lah. All right. So normally all this project, they will require you to do from start beginning to the end. So that included, sometimes mereka akan panggil awal buat cut inventory. All right. so, so it's good to know about it also. All right. So now, this is the format for it. So you can see this is a bilangan. Tarik, the document, what type of document, and then what is the number document. Okay, and then we got masuk, keluar, tambaki. Masuk means when you beli lah. Keluar means when you jual. Alright, because when you beli, the thing comes in. So, masuk. So, when you jual barang, then dia keluar. That's why it's keluar. And then, under the masuk, you will see ada quantity, harga, dan amount. So, berapa unit yang kamu beli? So, setiap unit, berapa harga? Is it not? So, you times, ini you times this one, then you get the jumlah amount. Then, same thing for keluar. Berapa unit yang kamu jual, yang keluar? Setiap unit, berapa kos harga dia? And then, the amount. And then this is a baki. Baki means your beli, tolak, jaw, then you get your baki. So later we we'll see how do we do this thing. All right. So look here, question four. So this is your question four. So take out your buku nota. Question four.
So you can prepare a table. Now, sometimes it's quite important for you to remember the table because a uh, soalan might not berikan format kepada awak. So you yourself, you have to remember this format. Right? Depends. Okay? So it's better for you to remember. Lah, all right? So bilangan... Tare document number document masuk and the masuk you got quantity berapa unit harga dia harga se unit amount so same for your keluar So something like this. And then make sure you got all the lines. Okay, so you can see that this is the baki, ni baki. So kita ada tiga produk sini. And when we record for this card inventory, kita mesti, let's say ada tiga produk, right? Then you have to do tiga card inventory. Because setiap satu card inventory ini adalah untuk satu produk. So let's say this one, I will put it for maybe for susu tepung cap rose. And then maybe it's, you bought this table and then you skip about 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. But 7, I think should be fine. And then you do another one for susu tepung cap okay okay so quick quick prepare another table for for that so make sure you got the bilangan p dari Document, number document, masuk, kelah, baki. Then, got this three things. Quantity, harga, amount. Quantity, harga, amount. Quantity, harga, amount. After that, you got susu, chai, lili. So, okay.
Okay. So I give you another three minutes to complete the table. All right. Make sure you got all these things for three products in it. So Sutapung, why three products? Here. Other baki, susu tepung cat, susu tepung cat orchid, susu chai lily. Alright, give you another three minutes to nine, ten. Alright, once you have done, you give me a done, D O N E, in the chat box so that I know you are done. So until nine, ten. Huh? Okay, are you guys done? If yes, you give me a D O N E done in the chat box. It's like that already. Mm. Only one person done. Slow man. Okay, got three late. Okay. All right. Okay, so since there are people that have done already, Maksud near the time is sufficient enough so I can continue. All right. Okay. So follow me first. All right. So even if you haven't done it yet, uh, you just listen because later you still have time to uh to complete the, the rest. All right. So after you have this table, what you're gonna do next is you put in the baki dulu. Because all these are baki, right? So then you put in the baki for all this. Let's say chonto. Susu tepung cap rose. Susu tepung cap rose. Okay, so this is actually the... When you read, not luma inventory very good deeper only daripada rumah susu by the 1st March 2020. So this is actually... Wait, let me put the tahun dulu. This is like your journal. So I am... Uh 
Okay, so on March 1, okay, so you got lima unit. So this one is what apa yang kita ada. Alright, our baki. So the quantity ada lima unit. So we put five. Berapa harga? 25 ringgit so unit. So you put 25. Harga 25. So when you use 5 times 25, you get 1, 2, 5. So here you put 1, 2, 5. Alright. So this is the amount. The amount maksudnya your quantity times your harga. So now, what is the baki? So the baki will be 5. Eh, sorry. Why am I putting muscle? Should be here, should be here, yeah. 5, 25, 1, 2, 5. Because you already got the baki column for you, right? So, in your baki here, you are the 5, you, you need 25 ringgit step you need, and then amount 1, 2, 5. All right? You, why can I put in maso? Because uh, maso is for beli. Okay, when you beli, then only put it here. But then now, kita dah ada beli, right? Kita punya baki sahaja. So, you put it here. Okay? So, same thing goes to your cap orchid. So, here, 2020. Okay, got all that ringgit Malaysia. So, March 2. So, you got 10 unit. So, under your baki, 10 unit. Each unit berapa ringgit? 55. <coughs> and then how much is the amount? 550. How you get 550? You just 10 times 55 ringgit. You get 550 ringgit. Alright, so susu, chai, lili. Much one, and then quantities five, thirty, hundred fifty. Okay, are you following? If yes, just give me an F in the chat box. Click on F. All right. Okay. So next. All right. So first, you record the baki dulu. Ah. All right. Just like your anything that we did for baki. Ah. For form, for form, for form. Okay. It's just like a ledger. All right. So if you remember, when we're doing all the ledger, all the bendukti, like account, blah, blah, blah. Okay. So we got what? We got baki. BB. So then we will put it there. Just like account bank. Alright. So account bank, if kita ada duit, then we will put the baki BB and put the money there. So this is what we have. The balance from last month, from last year. Then we bring it to this month or this year. So same thing. So this is apa yang kita ada. So we put it there first. Then, we read. Sepanjang bulan March 2020, beberapa urus yang kita telah berlaku seperti ditunjukkan di bawah. So, Sepanjang this bulan, March, I will buy and sell. So when you buy, then you put it masuk lah. And when you sell, when you draw, then you put in the keluar. Alright, so let's look at this March 1. Beli 70 tin susu tepung. So you have to look at the product carefully. Which product? Yang ni. Susu Tepung cap rose. Yang ni lah. Susu tepung cap rose. Okay. Berharga RM25.13. Daripada Nexum Trading Secara Credit. Alright. So, for your inf information, we don't really care about the secara credit atau secara tunai here. Because this card inventory is just to record inventory. Ah. You see, that's why I said there are a lot of systems. So, this system, the social credit, will later go into the where? The billing and payment 
system that I mentioned about just now. You see that? You, can you see? So in the Urus Niagara, there are a lot of systems. They come into play at the same time. Okay, just like now I'm moving, right? Okay, so if you study biology, they will tell you that your brain or you send the neuron or the nerve system to your hand and tell it to move, something like that. Okay, then you move. Okay, so it's actually my brain, but at the same time, you got the nerve and then your, your, your bone, your muscle, everything together at the same time. That's why it is moving. Okay, so same thing here in your March 1st. So come, let's record. So you don't have to care about a social credit. <coughs> is it account volume terima, account volume buyer? No, 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 no. Here, cut inventory. I told you cut inventory is very simple one. How many unit comes in? Buyer dengan berapa ringgit, then you record that. Okay, so uh, for this one is in tepung cap rows. Okay. Tarik March 1, I already recorded just now. So, here, so second row lah. Since it's already March 1, then you don't need to write March 1 again. So, document, what document is this? So, dia sudah bagi invoice asal. Invoice asal. And then, it is A. 2213, you can see the number document here. Okay, then kita beli. Can you see now? So when you beli, maksud the, you buy the thing. So the product, the barang negara akan masuk. So masuk berapa unit, berapa tin? 70. So here quantity, 70. So tem unit berapa ringgit? 25 ringgit setin. So, 25 ringgit setin. So, now, they didn't tell you the jumlah, but we have to calculate ourselves. So, 70 times 25, how much you get? You use your calculator. 70 times 25, you get 1,750. So, this 1,750, you put it here. All right, are we done yet? Not yet, because we got the bucky. So what is the latest bucky now? So in the beginning of the March 1, kita ada 5 unit. Sekarang kita beli 70, so yes, 5. 5 plus the 70 unit, then you get how much? And so now sekarang we got 75 units in the bucky. And setiap harga, you cannot say 25 plus 25, ah. Setiap unit berapa? It's still 25 ringgit setiap tin. Isn't it? The, the price setin, the harga setin, the other berubah. It's still the same at 25. But the amount will be different. So there are two ways to calculate the amount here. The first way is, you can either use 75 times 25. 75 times 25. You will get 1875. Or channel could do is you can use the amount bar key 125 plus the amount yang kamu beli tadi, 1750. And then at the end, you still get 1875. Why? Because this is max. All right. So for those that you bought max, memang you know the concept of this one. All right. So at the end, it's the same. One eight seven five so that's there's nothing special here no magic okay so it's just pure maths okay guys faham dah semua if faham you give me a one in the chat box all right very good so next fifth so you tengok sini ah Menjual 25 tin susu tepung cap rose. Look for the card inventory mana satu. Cap rose. Oh, is this again? Alright. So, harga 45 ringgit setin kepada kedai rincit. 
Yeah, very careful. Huh? Okay, but now we go step by step. So we know it's this commentary and then Tariq 5th of March, Lima. Okay. And then you you apa? You jual. Bukan beli ah, you jual. Jual means what? The product we goes out. Okay, dia keluar. All right. So here design. So sini ah, nanti keluar. Okay, but before that, let's record for the document dulu. So ada invoice salinan. Invoice salinan. By the way, this one you can bilang you can put like one la, two la, okay. So the number is V2190. Okay, so you draw, draw proper unit 2015, 25 unit. Okay, you draw, harga proper 45, or oh, you go and put 45. Okay, don't write first, huh? You put 45, let's say. Okay, I'm just showing you first. Then, how much is the amount? So, you say 25, darab dengan 45. You get 1125. Then, if you do this way, and then, how much would be, would be your bucket? Then, you will say, okay, senang senang. You 75 minus 25. But, what about the haga? Can you use so how how are we gonna do for haga? We use twenty five dollar forty five ah. I thought we use forty five dollar twenty five ah. That makes sense. You get what I mean? All right. So maksudnya, me we cannot record like that for Jordan. Okay. Let me repeat again. The cut inventory, we don't care about the jualan or berlian, how much we sell. We only care about the inventory, how many unit we got. Point number one, how many unit we got. And then second is, we always stay with our cost. Tetap punya. Maksudnya, berapa ringgit, how much we bought, berapa ringgit yang kita beli dengan kita bayar, then when we record the card inventory, even though we sell at 45 ringgit, but how much is the original cost for this product? We record that. So, contoh for this one, even though kita jual for 45 ringgit, but for susu tepung cat rose, what is the harga cost? The harga cost yang kita beli is all 25 standard. And then berapa unit yang kita jual? 25 unit. You not? So the harga should all be the same. 25, 25, you can see. Do you understand? If yes, you type a yes, Y-E-S in the chat box. Right, because since I already show you, if you put a 45 there, how are you going to record here? Not, it doesn't make sense at all. All right, so here, we just want to know what is the cost and the inventory, how much do we have? All right, so here amount, very simple. You just use 25 times 25. Then you will get 625. Uh, then only you see the 25 with 25, right? Uh, then you can do the maths. So the still haga the cost is the same. Now 75 minus 25. Tadi for this one, when we want to find this one, we use 5 plus 70, then we get 75. Tadi masuk. Now sekarang kita keluar, we sell. So at first kita ada 75, but kita keluar 25. So I have to minus, right? So this one minus this one, then I get 50. Do you know what I mean? So 50, so same way, you can either use the times method, meaning use 50 times 25, you get how much? 50 times 25, 
you get one two five oh one two five but if you don't want to use times you can use <coughs> one eight seven five minus sixty five it's the same thing six two five one eight seven five minus six two five you get one two five oh two yeah. clear or not if yes you give me a clear c type c in the chat box if you are clear right okay so continue clear yeah? so now we go to seven so seven you believe 35 Susu tepung cap orchid. Okay, so now it's orchid. So you look for the product orchid. Orchid, sini. So you beli 35 tin on 7, right? Okay, so sini. 7. Document dia je lah. Invoice. Asal. F3781. You beli, right? Beli means uh, product barang yang itu masuk. So, you got berapa unit? 35 unit. Setiap tin berapa harga? 55 ringgit setin. So, you can see that when your baki is 55, normally when you buy the harga, it will be the same 55 because it's the same product. Alright? Of course, when you go a bit higher level, like when you go to college and do something like this, the current inventory, they will have different costs when you. All right, but now as at SBN, then uh, of course uh, they don't give a lot of like hard hard thing, so they just go simple. Okay, so if this product is fifty five ringgit, then when you beli, it will be fifty five also. All right, so if la uh, okay, let's say you go to college, so let's say. The, the price is different. So how are you going to do? So normally, we just divide. Okay, we just divide by two or average down cost. So there are a few methods to do that. Okay, so that would be like, if you're really interested into accounting, you go to college and you will learn about it. Definitely. Okay. So how do you get this amount? So use 35 times 55. Then you get 35, 55, we get 1925. So 1925 here. All right, invoice ourselves. So what about your baki? Same thing, ini masuk, right? Then you tambah dengan your baki. So it will be your 10 plus your 35. Then you get 45 unit. And then the harga I told you normally is the same. Then the harga. I mean, sorry, the amount here, you can either use 550 plus 1925. I thought you can straight away use 45 times 55. You get 2475 for your monkey. That's it. Then we go to 11. Okay, see one, this one. Memulangkan lima tin susu Pung cap orchid susu tepung cap nah, this one okay you pulangkan so you beli dia mah so sekarang you pulangkan pulangkan means apa product the barang negara itu akan keluar alright and then it is in orchid okay, right so here you record 11 here okay, the bilangan you can put like 1, 2, uh, 3 lah okay if you want 1, 2 Right, so the document is uh, <coughs> not a credit wait oh wait 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 okay wait wait this is what am I in 11 hold on yeah 8 we also belum done right okay why we jump to 11 okay now go to 8 first 8 okay could I run cheat Pak Mak memulangkan tiga tin susu tepung cap rose berharga 45 ringgit setin kerana salah size. Now, who is this kedai runcit Pak Mak? 
is it us ada ada ini ada ke kedai a uh, rincit mak ah, sorry pak mak kita bukan right okey siapa kita kita rumah susu we are rumah susu alright maksud when they say kedai rincit pak mak membulangkan meaning this is our customer dia pulangkan tiga tin susu tepung kepada kita. Right? So, this is somehow like a pulangan apa? Jualan. You can see that this is a nota kredit salinan. I told you nota kredit is always linked to pulangan. KP. Do you remember? And then when you see salinan, S for what? S for sell. Sell means jua. So this is actually a pulangan jualan. Alright? So when you have a pulangan jualan, maksudnya, see ya, pulangan jualan is like that. When you jual barang, barang itu keluar. Okay? Keluar. So when dia pulangkan, maksudnya, Masuk balik lagi. You jual, dia pulangkan kepada kita. So, barang ini masuk. So, this is for uh, produk tepung cap rose. Cap rose ini. So, this one on 8th. This is uh, in nota credit salinan. And K2212. So, dia masuk. So, masuk berapa tin? Tiga tin. Okay. So, the harga. You can see that 45. Why do they write 45? Because when you look back to fifth, kita jual 45. That's why when they pulangkan, dia cakap dia pulangkan uh, tiga tin yang berharga 45 ringgit. But when we record here, we don't record 45 ringgit because kita dah beli dengan 45 ringgit they just sell they just return back to us the things that we sold to them all right so what is the harga the original harga when we beli is just 25 ringgit so always record the cost sahaja all right so 3 times 25 you get 75 So now you add to your baki sini. So quantity 50 plus 3, you got 53. And then the harga is always the same, 25. And then your amount will be how much? 53 times 25. 1, 3, 2, 5. Or if you want, you can use 1,250. Plus 70 and you get this. Uh, sorry, 1250 plus 75 and you get 1325 also. All right. Okay, now we go to 11. So 11 now you see pulangkan. You memulangkan. So can you see here in front? Dia tak ada nama. Tadi dia in, ini, in front ada nama. So for 11, because tak ada nama, maksud this is kita atau saya. Saya yang memulangkan lima tin susu tepung cap orchid kepada peniagaan saling. So, this is kita yang pulangkan. So, this is actually a pulangan belian. And you see, nota kredit. Nota kredit means pulangan. And then, asal means belian. If you still remember, salinan means jualan. As for sell, sell jualan. And then, asal is belian. Alright, so when you see nota kredit asal, maksud this is a pulangan belian. Alright, so when you beli, masuk. When you pulangkan this belian, ia jadi a keluar. So which product? Orchid. Alright, so here, nanti we have to record in the keluar column. So this is a 11. So nota kredit. So, NK7643. 
So keluar Berapa unit? 15 Setiap berharga 55 So 5 times 55 You will get 275 And then the quantity will be Nah, ini keluar ya So your baki will be 45 Minus 5 You get 40 Then the harga sama 55 Then the amount You use the quantity times the harga you get 2200. All right. Okay. Next 11 down, we go 15. 15, you draw the 12 tin susu tepung cap of kit dengan harga 65. But I told you, when you draw, we don't look at the harga anymore. All right, because this is a system inventory. So you draw mana satu, orchid. So you go to orchid, you look for orchid. Okay, orchid here. And then 15, okay, okay, 15. Okay, document, apa? Invoice salinan. So when you say invoice, I told you invoice means the child credit, right? Okay, but you don't know, is it a jualan atau belian? So you look at this salinan. S stands for sell. Or seller. Sell means draw. That's why this is a jualan. Alright, so when you need to record in your buku uh, catatan pertama, where do you record? This is an invoice salinan secara kredit. Maksud, you have to record in your journal jualan. You see? Faham tak? Do you, do you guys still remember this one? If yes, you give me a yes in the chat box. See who is still who still remember this like from document into journal, your buku catatan pertama. Ah, uh, right. So, uh, you can either look at this one or look at this one. So, actually, from this document itself, they already tell the whole picture already. Ah, uh, like this bill two nine salina. So bill two nine, I don't read here. Bill two nine means secara two nine atau secara check, and then salina means jualan. Maksud dia jual barang secara Tunai other check. So when you look here, you draw and then you can see check terima. You see? So build tunai asal. Build tunai means secara check atau secara tunai asal. Asal means you believe. You believe. Maksud you believe secara check dengan check. You see? So same thing ini. So you can see that this whole thing, the document actually explain, give you the meaning, give you the maksud. Okay, okay. Come back to here. So 15, so uh, you draw, right? So dia keluar lah, right? Because it's all right. So this one, right? So invoice salinan V2191, all right? And then you draw, so dia keluar lah, right? So 12 tin, harga dia, I don't care about harga. What is the cost? When we believe it's 55, right? So sini 55, amount will be 12. Times 55, you get 660. What about your baki quantity? Your quantity will be 40. Dia keluar 12. So you have to minus 12. And you get 28. Yang baki. So your 55, same harga. So you need. So what is your amount? Your amount, you can use 2200 minus 660. You get 1540. If you don't want, you can use 28 times. 55 will be the same also, 1,540. That's it for your 15. Now we go to 18. You draw, so draw upper. Uh, cap rows, cap rows in here. All right. So cap rows on 18. <clears throat> Document is bill tonight salinan. You turn on salinan, you got two. Uh, <clears throat> here we got two this um, document. So I think this SBB is actually your check, the normal check. All right, but now you just normal document for this bill to nine CS. All right, so CS7612. So you draw maksud the keloa. So keloa. 30 tin and then harga dia 
I don't care how much you sell. I, I sudah cakap banyak kali. You don't care about berapa yang you jual. You look at your cost. How much? All is 25. So you just put 25. Just follow. Right? So you can see that all the harga is the same. 25, 25. If your harga is 55, then it will be all 55. All right? So how much is the amount? 30 times 25. You get 750. So how much is your baki? So your baki will be, for quantity, is 53 minus 30. You get 23. And then the hugger is still the same, 25. And then your amount will be 23 unit times 25 ringgit. So you need, then you get 575. So now, we only have left with 23 team. So we have to cap rows. And then we have 25 ringgit. So, maksudnya jumlah amount bagi tepung cap rose adalah 575 ringgit. Right? So, that's paki kita. Alright. So, 18 done. We go to 22. You beli. Okay. You beli. Apa? Susu cair lili. Uh, ini. Alright. You beli. So, uh, on 22nd, document dia bill tunai asal. <coughs> we do not ask out. <coughs> BT21 You beli kan? Beli dia masuk. So, berapa kotak? 20 unit. 20 kotak. Harga dia berapa yang beli? 30. So, once again, you can see that it's the same. The harga. 30. 30. Okay. So, amount will be 20 times 30 should be 300 lah, right? I'm sorry, 600. Okay, 600. So, your baki quantity 5 plus 20. You get 25. I'll go the same 30 and then the amount 25 times 30. You get 750. Are you all following? If yes, you give me a F in the chat box. Let me drink some water first. Hmm. <clears throat> okay, last one. 23rd. Okay. Which product? Susu Chai Lili. Okay. 23rd. Bill. Tunai Sagunan. Number document is CS7613. Okay. So, ini. Jual. Jual. You jual barang means dia keluar. Keluar. So, we'll be here lah. Alright. Berapa ini yang keluar? Lima kotak. Uh, sorry, lima pula. Lapan kotak. Lapan unit. Okay. Setiap so, 35 ringgit. No. Okay, we don't care about apa, uh, harga jualan dia. We look at the harga cost. Harga cost is berapa? 30, 30, 30. <clears throat> Alright, so the amount will be 8 times 30, you get 240. Then the quantity, you have the 25 baki, tapi sekarang you jual 8, dia keluar 8, so your unit quantity hanya ada 17 saja. <clears throat> Alright, and then the harga, so you need is the same, 30, and then the amount, 17 times 30, then you get 510. So, that's it. So here you can, uh, can clean it up. Okay, one, two, three, three, four. 
one, two. <clears throat> All right, so you can see that for Susu Topong Cap Rose, at the end, we got 575. <clears throat> okay. This is the Baki AQ. This is the Baki Awa. So now I can see. This is the Baki Awa. And then this is the Baki AQ. Same thing for this one. Baki Awa here, 550. And then the Baki AQ for uh, the cap orchid is 1,540. Same goes to your, uh, this Chai Lily. And then the Bakia is 510. Okay, so this is our A. Okay, what about B? B dia nak menghitungkan nilai inventory AQ. So how do we calculate inventory? What is inventory AQ? Inventory AQ means nilai inventory pada tarik AQ bulan atau tahun. So in this question is bulan Mac, right? Dia sepanjang bulan March. So what is the nilai yang inventory AQ? Meaning here lah. All these things lah that are highlighted. Is it? But they are not like setiap product. They not jumlah. So here, what we can do is nilai inventory AQ equals to five hundred and seventy five plus one five four zero plus five hundred and ten. Means you So you add up all the inventory AQ for each product, setiap product, and then you will get the jumlah nilai inventory. So lima tujuh lima tambah satu lima empat kosong tambah lima satu kosong, and you get RM two thousand. 625. Boom. This is the answer. Do you guys get it? Is it clear? If yes, you give me a C in the chat box again. So this is how you do for your cut inventory. So is it very hard? Not really. All right. So you will know what is hard later because when you compare this one with what you're going to learn later is nothing, I can tell you. All right. So this is very simple, straightforward type of question. Okay. They won't test you like very hard. So it's just like this. Okay. So once again, boleh faham dah semua? If yes, give me an F in the chat box again, everyone. Okay, good. All right, so that's all for your system. Okay, this system inventory, as I said, is not a big topic and is not that really, really very, very important. Okay, it's just a small part in your, but some people don't even realize that there's this chapter in your form four. All right, and this is in bub six some more. Okay, so uh, you just have to know and make sure you do some practices, exercises for this type of question, and then uh should be fine, right? So it's not a big deal. All right, so let me give you homework. Okay, so the homework today will be page 120, you go to page 120, do question 
8. I think this 100, page 120 question 8 is a account kawalan, if not mistaken. All right. Then page 136, do question 8 again. I think this is something related to your imbangan duga. All right. And then this, you go to page 143 and do question 19. So this is what you learned today. All right, for this question 19 from page 143. So you have to do a cut inventory for that question, question 19. Okay, so lastly, you go to page 89. You have to do the total of 35 questions for your objective for part five. So please make sure you finish all these 35 question objective. So <clears throat> the thing is like that. When I explain, when I teach and discuss the question with you, I always discuss the Kertas dual question. If you notice, I never ever discuss with you the objective question. Why? Because I think that, and my logic is that, when you can understand, you can do the Kertas doer, definitely you can do the objective, which is your, which is your Kertas Satu. And there's no point to explain objective because in objective is even better. Objective question, you got A, B, C, D for you to choose. And for Kertas Duo, it's langsung kosong, and you need to do from zero. You, you, get, you got no hints. All right? So if Kertas Duo, there's kosong, no hints, and you need to write out the jawapan, write out all the format yourself from your brain, out of nothing, if you can do that, definitely you can do objective Kertas Satu. Do you understand what I'm saying? All right? That's why satu, I just give you and you go and do yourself. After doing it, make sure you check back to your answer. Check to the answer yourself. There's answer for it. So make sure you check and if it's wrong, then you find out why is it wrong. Why is it like that? And then from that day onwards, please change the answer in your head so that you won't make the same mistake again. You guys clear understand? If yes, give me a one in the chat box.